time to make that worm. Time to make a worm. I'm gonna make a worm. Oh yeah. Let's see where we are. Inch worm inch. Little worm inch. Little worm, little worm, little worm inch. Little worm inch, little worm inch. Little worm, little worm, little worm inch. Inch by inch. Little worm inch. Inch by inch, my little worm inch. Inch by inch, little worm inch, gotta do a worm. Where's my worm? Gonna find my worm. Somewhere around here should be a video on how to make a cheap D&D miniature purple worm mouth. There it is. Okay, all right. I'm pretty much sure I can get the sound coming through. I'm gonna pull out my earplugs and I'm gonna have a quick rundown of what's happening today because this is not what I made. This is the miniature you can buy or could buy years ago and um, that's not really what the project is for today and I'll explain to you why in a second but we are going to get started and uh, I'm just going to make sure I plug in my glue gun because last time I ran out of glue sticks doing the last project. Oh, here we go. Plug this in. All right. So, uh, Mithandriel, how's it going? Uh, can you tell us a bit about the monster while you work? Oh, you, you're putting me under um, strain. Okay, look, um, give me a second. I wasn't expecting to tell you an awful lot. I've actually used the purple worm a few times, but uh, how much do I know about the purple worm? Now, honestly, I don't actually know an awful lot. I've used the monster plenty of times. I just don't really... I haven't read the descriptor and memorized all the little bits and pieces about it. But I will try to give you sort of a basic rundown as I go. Since you've asked, might as well do it, right? So I'm going to just see if I can just prop my book over here. If you can see what's going on here. That's going to be very difficult. I might have to just plonk it in a different location uh, that is still going to be accessible and not get in the way because I don't really want things getting in the way. That would be just annoying. Just bear with me while I shuffle things around. I had actually organized a whole lot of other things. Um, my biggest issue I guess is this. My table is just not big enough to accept miniature making gear and books which is why I haven't really done that. Okay, all right, I think I've got it sorted out. If I haven't, then you'll have to bear with me. Let's get started because I've been blabbering for about three minutes now. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today we're not talking about Dungeons and Dragons, no. We're gonna make a cheap D&D miniature, the Purple Worm Mouth. Now, just because I've got the Purple Worm miniature here in the video, doesn't mean we're making this. What I require from you is to let me know if that's the sort of thing you really want me to make in a video because this would take a long time, quite a few videos before I could actually get it done. So if you were showing up and expecting me to show you how to make this worm, that's actually not what we're making. So I'm making it clear right now. I'm not making this thing. What we're going to do is we're going to create the mouth of the worm and that is it and that is going to be our miniature now the reason for doing that is anybody can do it it's really easy it shouldn't take a long time to do I can see the room is already starting to empty as people hear this we are going to just create the mouth of the worm rising out of the ground ready to consume our miniatures or should I say our player characters that is the plan for today and it should be super simple so I'm going to get rid of this thing because that isn't actually part of the gist. I wanted to make sure you guys were aware we weren't making that. If you want me to make something like that, then I need to know there's enough people who would be interested in actually making a full-blown purple worm. What we're doing is the purple worm mouth and using that as a miniature. And I will ex explain and show you a picture of what I have planned for today. But in terms of our materials, uh, our materials here are we have a hot glue gun which is over out of the way so I can't burn myself I'll just this is what I've got I'm just letting that heat up and, and keeping it away from me so I can't hurt myself I've got some more glue sticks I've got a uh, Stanley retractable knife this is the classic it's 
got a good heavy blade on it just in case I get stuck. I've got a lighter, smaller cutting uh, tool. Um, I've got a base here. Now this base is more equivalent to huge size rather than gargantuan. <clears throat> now why have I not got a gargantuan base thread, really? Because the purple worm is a gargantuan monstrosity. Well, the simple fact is we're only dealing with the mouth. We're not dealing with the whole worm. If I was dealing with the whole worm, I would need a larger base. And I haven't actually had a chance to actually cut anything out large enough to deal with that. So we're going to be using this as our, our base for our miniature. I'm building onto this. So as I said, this is slightly larger than huge size, only fractionally. Uh, then I've got tin foil. We're going to use quite a lot of tin foil today. I've got some uh, toothpicks, which I'm going to use for teeth. I've got some milliput because I use a lot of milliput in my videos. And this is going to basically uh, be coated over the tin foil or aluminum foil or aluminium foil, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that'll give us our basically the, the structure of our uh, worm. And then I've got some. Citadel crafting or sculpturing tools to move everything around So those are our materials. Oh, I almost forgot you will need a cutting board of some kind because there will be a bit of cutting involved uh, And all of the materials and tools are in the description If you uh, don't pick up on any of the information you should be able to look down there right now and find it It's not too hard to, to, to figure out what's going on right so here is my little rough drawing of my purple worm and what I plan to do. So this is essentially what I want. I'm only trying to create the worm just coming out of the ground and then a row of teeth. So as I said, shouldn't take as long as making a full blown purple worm and it should be fairly easy for you to make if you really want a purple worm in your game. And as I said, Stick it in the comments or in the live chat if you really want me to do a full-blown purple worm But don't send me on that particular um, Build if you want a full-blown purple worm unless you're actually planning to make it yourself Otherwise, it's kind of like I guess it's fun to watch But did it actually benefit you or anybody else if nobody ever wants to make it anyway? Okay, so that is the plan and basically I've got my base. I'm going to build up like a a donut of tin foil and then I'm going to layer that with my milli parts and then I'm going to insert teeth into it with the toothpicks and that should be pretty much the whole thing so I'm gonna get rid of this picture and we will we will get started I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew exactly what was going on so I'll move some of the stuff out of the way we will need it later obviously but right now it's just uh, taking up space when what I really need is just a few things accessible and I'm going to just open up this so I've got a glue stick ready to go right. and that hot glue gun is heating up and basically all we need right now is just our base and some tin foil that's it, pretty simple so I'm going to take some tin foil and I'm going to call, create like a donut. I'm going to squish it up and then form it on my base. Now, if I'm not talking about the purple worm and all its intricacies while I'm doing the tin foil or the aluminum foil or aluminium foil, it's because you won't be able to hear anything because of all the crinkling noises. Okay, we'll get back to that. Keep going. Hopefully you got the idea of what I'm trying to do. I think Star Wars in the um, the Salak pit.
would make that a lot thicker. What's that? Demi, demi Mari? Mara? Dem, demi Mada? Yeah, would be great. What would be great, man? You need to. Are you talking about making a full blown purple worm or are you talking about uh, something else? This is a good point to actually start creating it and then wrapping more around. And don't get um, put off by the simple structure because it should look more worm-like when I'm finished. Yeah, I'm going to do that, absolutely. Daimuda. Okay. Um, yeah, no, well, it's just the tin foil will probably drown out uh, the sound. But uh, yeah, look, we can. Uh, I can cover some details on the purple worm if you like. I just want to make sure I get the tin foil crinkling noises out of the way first. Once I move on to something like the puttying, it's a lot less noisy. I don't know if you guys have seen me working with tin foil before, but it's it can be a little tricky because you can't sort of wind it round easily in a nice big um, long strip, and so you've sort of got to build it up slowly, and uh, that's exactly what I'm doing here. You might even be able to hear somebody trying to do some vacuuming uh, in the house. I could close the windows, but I would probably wind up passing out. It's very, very hot today. And um, cicadas are going bananas. Absolutely going bananas. I think I've used the purple worm in my game about, depending on the games that I've used, at least six or seven times. It's quite a lot. I think I've been I've eat, played a character that got swallowed by a uh, a purple worm, which was kind of actually I got swallowed by a purple worm twice in the same adventure, with different characters. Um, yeah, it happens. Wrong place, wrong time. Down the gullet. Dinner for us. Dinner for the worm. <laughs> anyway, okay, so. As you can see, it's just a tin foil donut, which alone is actually probably really uninteresting. Okay, with a row of teeth, it would be really uninteresting. But we want it to actually sort of be popping out of the ground. So we're going to actually lay something on here to give the whole thing a bit of texture. And um, just like it is that the ground is breaking apart. All right. Grab this. Now, me being swallowed by a purple worm twice in the same adventure is not rough. It was a product of my own stupidity. I 
I'd talk more about it, but it's an adventure I would like to do a review on, and I would give away a whole lot of spoilers. Oh, sorry about that, guys. I just a little mosquito tried to get me. How's it going, Lego? I do this quite a bit. Tin falls a lot easier to work with if you tear it up into smaller pieces. And for those of you who've only just jumped in, is it cheap? Yep. Well, tin foil or aluminum foil is pretty cheap. It's not expensive. Um, I've I cut this base. I, look, you don't have to make your own base for your purple worm. I just cut this out, and you could literally just find some thick material and a coping saw or some sort of um, cutting device and just cut it out and make your own base. You could even use the base off a, uh, a container, like the plastic lid off a container that's the right size to put your worm on. Right, so all that tin foil is there for a reason. So for those of you who are wondering why am I doing this, it's because what I want to do is I want to uh, crumple up bits and pieces and build up some texture on here. Uh, to make it look as if it's bursting out of the ground. And that was my intention anyway. Oh, okay. So, you think it's funny? In New Zealand it's warm, sunny day. Yeah, it is a summer day. Uh, here in Germany, it's almost 1 a.m. and freezing cold. Yeah, it's what about? It's almost 1 p.m. It's about 12:50 p.m. just after lunchtime in New Zealand. Um, and essentially, why I'm doing this because I'm just taking a break before I go back to doing uh, more house brick repairs. Alright, I will talk about the purple worm soon enough. I just I want to get some bits. Kind of on this. And um, I'm hoping I'm gonna I'm probably gonna have to stick it all down, which I will. I have been looking at new pro, um, projects. For those of you who are wondering when I'm planning to paint some of the projects that I've completed, like the Beholder um, and the Spirit Naga, um, it's just I've got to wait till the weather's not quite so humid. The humid weather here makes it very difficult for paint to dry, and therefore I've been avoiding doing that sort of thing just because of that, that issue. Okay. Right. Now I'm flattening a lot of this down, but it's still making the, the surface quite uneven, as you can see. I'm going to start gluing this into place now, and uh, which means hopefully the tin foil will rustle a lot less. <laughs> so first things first, let's get the glue gun into place. And just, hmm, I should have attached and glued as I went. So I'm going to turn it upside down and just, uh, yep, all right. Oh, what happened to my glue stick? I had a glue stick that was supposed to be hot. Oh, it's disappeared on me. Come here. Here we go. 
I don't need to do too much. I think that will be more than sufficient. And then press it to place. And maybe a to push it down with. I might grab some tools just so I don't wind up um, burning myself when I don't need to. And I got that one, and I got this one. All right. It's easily accessible. Like there, and then all right. So that's the first layer, and then. The next layer is this one, so we're going to go outside, outside, outside. Oh, come on, just feed through. Okay. Right. And attach. Oops. Oh, ah, oh, oh, burning myself, burning. Ouch. Okay. my arrangement doesn't really matter you can go just stick it anywhere it's just to uh, make sure the base is not really uh, tidy and neat okay there we go if the base is really tidy and neat then it's not going to be quite as um, interesting and working my way around here great thing about tinfoil is you can you can sort of push it around and reshape it if you need to and it's not very expensive it's pretty cheap it doesn't cost a lot Again. Oh. Okay. And fraction more. Okay. Alright, I've pressed that into place. I'm just going to let that cool for a second, so I'm just going to push that out of the side. Um, just while it, it dries and hardens. Okay, so this is going to be sitting on top of that. And I know it doesn't look very impressive, honestly. It should look a lot more impressive once we get it there and in place. And then we coat it with some um, putty and put some teeth into it. Oh. Purple worms are one of those things that got like a. There are a lot of hit points. They've got high armor class. Um, they, their burrowing speed is. Don't go running your um, purple worm across the ground. You know, make sure it's going down under the ground and then coming up from underneath. I wouldn't actually go um, using it as a, a, a land-based creature. It should be should be burrowing, diving down, coming back up from underneath. It makes it a lot harder for the players to deal with them. Okay, so we're just going to just squish all that down a little bit. And that's not too bad. I feel like that's mostly stuck on. Maybe I need to just put a little bit of glue underneath there so it doesn't come free. And then press it down. Let's put something heavy on it. Just hold it there. Here we go. That was easy. Piece of cake. So this is the sort of creature you find usually in caves, purple worm. It's uh, it's like the underdark and the cavern areas. Anything below the ground, they tend to sort of uh, hang out in those uh, locations. They don't have any eyes. They have a mouth. They don't have a nose. They're whole, they're essentially just a giant worm that eats. So it doesn't sound horribly um, frightening, but they can pick up uh, noise. So that's that tremor sense. 
They also have like a blind sense, but I think the tremor sense is the thing that you've got to worry about the most because it's 60 feet uh, for the Dungeons and Dragons 5e rulebook, and, um, or the Monster Manual, should I say. So it's pretty good at figuring out when something is nearby, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not going to be seeing anything because it's a very simple creature. It is a worm. That is it. All right, like, let's stick this structure that I created on here and then start building everything up. I'm going to have to use quite a lot of um, milliput or um, putty today. Usually I haven't used as much as I'm going to have to use today, but that's, that's just part of the deal with this particular project. I did actually go and buy some spear um, putty just in case I ran out for this project. Okay. Now you can make the mouth of your worm a lot smaller than I have made mine. Um, and you can make the base a lot bigger if you wanted to as well. Right, I'm going to get rid of the tin foil because honestly I don't need the tin foil. Sorry, I don't need the tin foil anymore. It's not a good idea when I start rustling tin foil and I'm talking at the same time. <laughs> Let's use the tool because that almost burnt myself. Okay. And that is mostly held in place. Okay, cool. Oh, is that going to move? No, I think it'll be fine. Maybe if I just attach it there, that won't peel up. Okay, I think that's got our basic structure done, which means I can get rid of the glue gun for quite a while I suspect, in fact I probably won't need the glue gun anymore uh, the chances are that uh, anything that requires gluing of a glue gun will just cause me trouble now just going to grab a drink of water and I'm <clears throat> just going to shuffle things around a bit make myself a little bit more comfortable I've got a lot of puttying ahead of me Okay, all right, so in the middle and where is the stuff I've already used? Is this the new pack or the old pack? I think it's a new pack. All right, okay. Okay, so I'm going to have to make up quite a lot of um, putty for this project. So I'm going to be very, very generous. And therefore, I mean, out of all of the projects I've made, I would say this is going to be fairly expensive in comparison just because of the amount of milliput that I'm going to have to use. I don't have to put a, a thick layer over. I can put a thin layer over, that's not an issue. It's just the amount of area that has to be covered. All right. I think that's not even going to be remotely enough. Let's go with... I've also got to work with it fast enough so it doesn't actually go hard on me. Okay, there we go. So this the purple worms, the sort of creature that consumes um, rock and dirt. So it doesn't just consume, it's not necessarily consuming um, flesh. Something to bear in mind. Something to, to take a note of. That it's not necessarily going to be hunting down prey. It can feed off just the natural uh, area that it's in.
like most worms, purple worm has a secretion uh, which allows it to move around in its natural inha habitat and um, because of its, uh, its, the way it's built it actually, it's, it, it's, its whole motion and the way that it's built allows it to uh, feed itself or pu push itself through the earth think the movie Tremors, think a little bit like that Okay, I think that's good. I'll get rid of that for now. I'm probably going to have to mix up some more at some point, but that should be enough for a little while. Has anybody here used a purple worm in their campaign or had a game where they were involved with a purple worm? I, um,. When people ask me what's my favourite monster, I guess the purple worm would be one of my favourites. It's the one that I uh, I enjoy utilising uh, with the players, particularly once they get to a level where they're high enough to be able to manage it. Purple worm's like a challenge rating 15, so it's actually fairly hard to actually deal with. This is the process of just mashing it all together and trying to get it to uh, blend in almost takes a bit of time I feel like I should have made a lot more up than I have but we'll see how we go with the purple worm it's not just about its uh, bite it also has a stinger if you can get the stinger out of the ground and sting your target and uh, bite it, that's great. I think the worst part about the purple worm is the fact that it can swallow you. And once it, once you're inside it, uh, it's really difficult to get, to get out. That's what I found anyway. I ran a campaign years ago where I used uh, a giant worm. It was a sandworm. Think uh, the movie June. And um, this particular worm was much larger than the one, uh, the purple worm in the, the monster manual. It, it was sort of, it was, it was June sized. Okay, so the, the, running away from it was impractical, really. And so uh, that, that was the, the crux of that particular adventure. And the players um, didn't actually see the worm first. What they saw was like 150 or 160 raiders uh, riding towards them. And they thought they were like outmatched and in trouble. Only to find out, uh, as I described the scene, that they weren't being attacked by the raiders in the desert. That the raiders were running or fleeing from a giant sandworm. And so... <laughs> They, the raiders got consumed, eaten, and then the players just freaked out. And I, and particularly when I said the worm scoops them all up. And they're like, ah, no, what are we going to do? So yes, I turned that into a chase scene using a skill challenge for using the Dungeons and Dragons 4E rules. You know, they, they utilize the skill challenge quite a lot. One of the best skill challenges I've ever run. Okay, so we've got a decent amount of putty here. I'm going to make a ball of it, flatten it out. I'm going to try to get the bottom section coated first. So I've done this before. You guys have seen me do this. You just flatten it out with your fingers. Get a thin layer. We can build onto it later, so you don't have to worry about getting it perfect. It's just about coating and covering this, um, this tin foil. If we don't coat and cover the tin foil, and nothing's going to work properly. So press it in. And if you want to have, if you don't want to have it just like flat in here and you want some, some more depth to it, you can, you can do that. I'm going to leave it flat because it, now it allows me to take a miniature and stick it inside the worm. You know, a little bit like the uh, gelatinous cube that I did yesterday. So I can actually utilize that. It's big enough to fit in at least one uh, medium-sized creature and if I was 
really pushing it, I might be able to squeeze two. But uh, that's why I've left it flat, just for that purpose. this again and then flatten out actually I'm gonna go with a bigger bigger blob so if I go with a bigger area I can cover a lot more faster all right so go so you can see how much putty I made up and how fast it's going to get utilized simply because the area that I'm covering is so much to cover. So I'm going to work my way from the bottom around there, fold it over, press it in, Remember, try to get rid of as many of those air pockets and bubbles that might be created when you're using this. And then grab my tool, and it's not so much because they're going to see the bottom of this. And they're not going to necessarily see the seam. And it, it really doesn't matter if there's little bits and pieces um, that sort of show that up. It's just to make sure the two pieces are joined. So I'm just going to press that in. Alright, I don't know if you can necessarily see what I've done here. I've just pressed it down. That's all I've done. Nothing else. Really, really simple. I'm going to flatten this out. I have to make up a whole lot more um, putty to, to coat this, but that's alright. Now, if there's little gaps like this, it doesn't matter because we're going to we're going to cover all of this eventually. Just get the um, just get the putty on. Can you imagine if I made a full blown purple worm and how much um, putty we would have to use to actually cover our tin foil? Making a structure out of say wire and tin foil would have required heaps and heaps. Okay. Right, I'm just using my fingers just to get rid of the marks that I created with the tool when I was joining it, just around the top, not so much in the, um, down the bottom there, but just around the top. Right, let's grab some more. So this time, I definitely have to make up a lot more. So, so that got me that far. So if I go with a piece that big, I think this is going to take about a third of my milli putt from one box. I think that's that's what I'm looking at. Now that's just for this stage. I mean, we've still got to get the teeth done. And I know what you're thinking. Why aren't we sticking the teeth in now? We don't necessarily need to stick the teeth in now. My general feeling is that we've got two options. We can force the toothpicks into the putty, or I can just glue them in place. Um, I think a combination of the two is probably the smartest way to deal with it. But, uh, um, let's grab some more of this and we'll just build it out a little bit more. should be right. You can see how much I'm having to make up. You could use other types of uh, molding putty and clay like oven bake clay if you feel like using an oven bake uh, method 
and my understanding is you can take that um, oven baked clay and when you bake it you don't have to bake it the full time because if you bake it for too, too long it turns into a big huge horrible messy puddle uh, but if you bake it for a short period of time leave it come back and then bake it again um, you're more likely to get a better result I do actually have some air drying clay which I could use to uh, make a larger uh, model for this particular type of creature so getting yourself a base and just using some air dry clay would be another option rather than using tin foil and uh, milliput or uh, two part or two epoxy um, putty another way of dealing with it There's so much, it's going to take me a little bit longer to mash it all together, that's all. Now if you want to know a little bit about the Purple Worm, a really good channel to check out would be AJ Pickett. He does, uh, dungeons, does, he does Dungeons and Dragons, Monster, Lore and Information. Um, those are really good. Uh, a lot of his um, videos are quite detailed. He does a lot of research. It's not going to be just the stuff that you've, you can see or read in the Monster Manual. Um, so yeah, his channel is really good if you're looking for something that would be uh, more about the, the ecology and the nature of a purple worm. Pretty sure he's got one up. I, I'm, I can't remember um, how long ago he made it, but I know that I'm pretty sure there is one. And there's, I think there's also a video uh, that was uh, done in parts where AJ made a purple worm. I think also a DM Scotty um, or DM Craft YouTube channel. They've got a video on making a full blown um, purple worm. The, the only difference is that this is done in stages. So he's, he's shot just certain parts of it, time lapsed some of it, um, skipped here, skipped there. He's showing you the basic process. But it's a big project, it would take quite a lot of time and probably quite a lot of resources too, to get it done. Uh, most of his stuff though is usually made with reasonably cheap materials, but I think that particular project would be harder. Alright. Oh, it's taking me so long to squish this all together. Sorry about that, guys. Guys and gals. Okay. Alright, so let's get this back in the middle. Do what I did before. Create a fairly sizable chunk. Roll it up into a ball. Like so. Flatten it out. thin as I can go without making it too thin. I don't really want to wind up having to re-patch this if I can help it. And then taking it down into the structure, down into the structure and then pressing it in and then folding it over. Just like that. And then get my little tool and then just tidy up inside and just join it a little bit. I didn't really feed quite enough into the bottom of there, so I'm going to have to go back over it, but that's alright. Let's just keep going. Let's get the basic bulk on it.
I was working on assembling a purple worm yesterday from Gale Force 9. That video is up. I got part way through, I'm just waiting for the top section to dry before I glue it together. Press it in. Try to get rid of all the little air pockets if you can. For those of you who are wondering why I don't play music in these sorts of videos, it's because usually it'll be copyright music, and if I get co non copyright music, it won't be music that you want to listen to anyway. So I always highly recommend if you're watching these types of videos that you be doing something else or bring your own music that you would prefer to listen to while you're watching because um, it's just uh, it's more sensible I wouldn't really want to watch somebody else's um, video for, for any length of time and listen to the, whatever um, copyright free music they've managed to find which probably won't be very good anyway same thing just make sure I clean up that join with my finger sorry if you can't see what I'm doing I'm trying to I'm trying to show you just a little bit tricky to um, get at, that's all. Right. Cool. Alright, so there's, there's a few gaps on the inside, plenty of gaps on the outside. I know it doesn't look like it's going to be a very convincing um, purple worm mouth, but just give it time. You can see I made sure I cut my fingernails this time. <laughs>
very, very warm here. I don't know if you guys are into puzzles, but um, one of my featured channels is DM Wally, and Wally does some very good videos on puzzle making as well. So yeah, check his stuff out sometime. Really nice stuff, um, well thought out, and he provides you quite often with more than one option for solving the, the puzzle itself, which I think is a great idea. And if you are um, got players who are looking to sort of upgrade their skill level with um, the game for Dungeons & Dragons 5e, then I would say Drow Bard. He does a lot of videos on um, more advanced nuances for utilizing the rules. He does videos on lots of different topics. Like He, he doesn't just play Dungeons & Dragons, but he does a lot of videos on understanding the combination of classes, how to build them, um, uh, how to utilize feats so yeah really good for somebody who's trying to advance their skills when it comes to building characters okay so we've got a good chunk of it done I just grab this do this again I'm going to flatten out not quite so much this time So for those of you who uh, just jumped in, this is just the purple worm mouth, that's not the actual full blown purple worm. And we've, it's designed in such a way as you can put the miniature inside the worm's mouth. I want to cover more, more of the tin foil. There we go, that's better. Plonk it there. And do it again. So if you're wondering if we'll get this all done in one video, I suspect that we probably won't. I think it'll wind up being at least two parts to complete the whole thing. Um, what I find with these build videos, particularly when they're live streamed, is that they actually... Almost all of these uh, monsters that I've made are monsters that I haven't actually built before. So you're actually seeing my first attempt and so um, I have no idea how long it's going to take and because you're making a miniature like making your own miniatures is a time consuming process so the only reason you would do it is if you want a special miniature and you can't buy it or you have time to do that sort of thing or you just can't buy them in your country or there's a miniature that you want but you can't get it because they haven't made it uh, I know that there is supposed to be a, a new um, icons of the realm classics monster uh, set that's come out and I think it might have a purple worm in it and that would probably be the only purple worm that I know of that's recently been um, printed there, there's also I have seen a one for uh, what is it um, Pathfinder but that was a, a few years back there's one for Reap of Bones as well I don't know if it, um, how available that is. I, I did see it online, but I don't know how available it is. My my issue with that Icons of the Realm Classics is it's got the Demi Gorgon in it, and I looked at the Demi Gorgon, Gorgon and I was thinking, yeah, I don't know. 
and they're older style uh, monster creations so they're supposed to be sort of more old style but I felt like the, the classic monsters they had put in there weren't really there were too many humanoids I really w would have preferred to have seen more monstrous creatures rather than you know orcs or an old style orc I really do I really need an old style orc does anybody really need an old style orc the only reason they created the old style orc the way they did was to stop um, Lord of the Rings um, estate, um, the Tol Tolkien family from from suing them for utilizing the concept of the orc, uh, and they managed to to fight that with tenuous evidence. <laughs> so. Okay, all right, so we're definitely getting there. I'm going to have to mix up some more. Mix out up about the same amount. The reason I'm doing this in batches um, is, you know, I know you're thinking, oh, why aren't you just mixing up the whole lot all at once, Fred? Is it's actually very hard to manipulate. A huge batch of this stuff. There we go. All right, let's just roll that just a little bit just to see with the size comparison and this one. I mean, seriously, when it comes to a purple wound, what you really want is the mouth section, right? So you can stick them inside. Stick the miniature inside, not, not the players, if that's what you were thinking. There we go. And it's not the right size, I'll grab a bit more from the other one. It's not super important that the, the amount that you get is exactly the same but you need to be reasonably close otherwise it's going to change the way it hardens it'll take longer the stuff already takes quite a long time to, to set as it is and it would be terrible if you didn't mix, mix up enough and it never set that that would be a real drag okay uh, fraction more and i think we're right So now that I've got my glue sticks, um, I'm considering the next project after this one being uh, something like a, a black pudding. I've, I did a drawing for a doppelganger, which I know is humanoid and I said I wouldn't do humanoids, but it's, it's not really a humanoid with a whole lot of really complicated features. So I feel like anybody could do that and um, I certainly feel that I can do that. Uh, so we'll probably have a go at doing that at some point. It's just going to make sure getting the scale right. And that'll be the important factor, which means getting the armature correct. And I've done videos on how to create armatures. And um, uh, in my subscriber feed for this channel, you'll find a guy called Tom. What's his surname? I can't remember. Tom does a whole lot of uh, sculpturing videos. Really cool. If you've got time to watch them, that is because they're quite long and involved and he's obviously very skilled so you'd have to be fairly skilled I guess yourself if you're not then but still kind of fun to watch sometimes I certainly found it useful myself even if I can't make dwarves and elves and stuff like that and I'm just sticking to just making monsters oh, this putty is just so much to squeeze and mash together keep going though squeeze and mash Death Junkie, how's it going? Welcome to the party. It's a very, very sedate, quiet party. It's all been very quiet. I've just been talking to myself. I did talk a little bit about purple worms, but there isn't actually an awful lot of information in the monster manual for Dungeons, for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. The, 
the purple worms got out like five paragraphs of information all of which is it isn't really in-depth information most of it is is pretty basic stuff that you would already know so yeah what i really regret is uh, giving my advanced dungeons and dragons monster manual away i still have my uh, fourth ed edition monster manual so i've got three of them um i've obviously got uh the fifth ed edition monster manual that has the purple worm in it i have the tomb of beasts or tome of beasts which is a really awesome book and i really want to return to doing videos on that at some point but hey it'll eventually come around it's just it's just getting time to do them that's all um bot atreus one bot atreus one how's it going there man i'm if i look if i got your name wrong i apologize we are just mashing well i'm just mashing putty together mixing it so I can apply it to the uh, the structure uh, death junkie gaming it's going good I'm desperately trying to get into D&D never played and don't even know where to begin okay all right well, let's talk about that because I did a video on it and I would suggest hunting down um, where to find D&D uh, players uh, there's a whole bunch of videos out there now on YouTube for doing that but some of the best places for getting involved are thank you for that yeah your name is a little bit of a toughie yeah boat boat trap boat boat trap boat trap one yeah yeah I have a little bit of trouble <laughs> but back to death junkie gaming um, look you want to start off with your friends and if you've got friends who like fantasy and would be interested in playing Dungeons and Dragons, there's a good place to start. Uh, if you find you've got nobody who's a friend of yours who wants to do that sort of thing, then have a talk to your family. There's always the best place to start is people close to you. After that, I would go with going down to your local game store if you have a game store in your area if you don't have a game store that's close by then that's just not practical um, but often if you go down there they'll have organized play or a group or no group or uh, a club that's playing role play games or tabletop board games or something like that and you can get involved with them and they may have somebody playing Dungeons and Dragons you'd be surprised I know a lot of people feel that if you never played the game before uh, trying to get into an existing game is really difficult but honestly things change so much people are always looking for new players uh, trying to pick up new games and Dungeons and Dragons 5e is more popular than it's ever been before I mean Dungeons and Dragons full stop has been so popular it's it's becoming more and more mainstream and so you will find there are heaps of people willing to actually give you a shot at it so don't feel like you can't get into the game uh, if you can't access uh, a game store Dungeons and Dragons Adventurous League is available through game stores but it's also available online that's the organized play and they're happy to have people who haven't played the game before so you play online with other people um, I don't know if you've used uh, use their services usually they use something like Roll20 or uh, Fantasy Grounds things like that Sometimes I'll use other tools, not necessarily related to that, to that at all. Okay, I'm just going to, sorry, I just need to cut that little piece off. I will get back to the topic though. And we'll just, just cut that down through there. Okay. So playing online is another option. Um, there's lots of online forum places that uh, can point you in the right direction to get in, involved in a game all of those if you find that you're really stuck and none of those are working where you are then look what I did I'm in New Zealand and Dungeons and Dragons was like uh, underground you know nobody really talked to anybody nobody really knew anybody it took me ages to actually find everybody because they were all hiding in their 
basements or hiding in their lounges and not really telling anybody that they what they did because you know the view of Dungeons and Dragons is it's for nerds which I don't agree with uh, and also too that it's a childish thing and that you shouldn't be doing it so um, trying to connect everybody up was what I did was I created a Facebook group in my area and I started putting it up and people just started joining and I became an administrator for that group obviously and then I it got bigger and bigger it's like uh, 1500 people and for New Zealand which has only got a population of four and a half million that's quite a lot considering and it continues to grow I mean every day we're adding anywhere from three to seven people which doesn't sound like a lot but for a little country like New Zealand it, it's worked out well and people are constantly connecting through that and you could do the same thing um, if you find you're in a, self, in a situation where you just can't get people in your area and you want to play face to face or you're having trouble picking up a game um, but I highly recommend trying to play online if you can uh, to start off with certainly that can help a lot and the Dungeons and Dragons Adventures League even though I don't really do a Dungeons and Dragons Adventures League anymore I used to be a local coordinator you'll find that they they will help you get into the hobby that's what they're set up for they will help you do that uh, there are online forums and websites uh, don't forget meetups I know it costs a bit of money uh, I know it does in my area but they can also hook you up with people who play Dungeons and Dragons in your area you should find that um, helpful too what else can I think of locations and ways of getting into it um, I think that covered most of it but like I said there is a video that covers that sort of thing in terms of what do you need you really don't need very much you don't even need dice as long as you've got a dungeon master who will let you use your phone and just use an app otherwise picking up some dice you can usually get those um, online if you can't get them from a game store because you've got nobody near, near you it's not hard it's pretty easy okay all right so Armando Stockdale same here all right trying to get into the game and having trouble hopefully that was helpful to you I certainly hope it was Okay, what have we got here? Death Junkie um, Gaming. That's how I found this live stream. I was searching for more videos to watch and teach me stuff and started watching my videos. Oh, oh, cool. That's good. Uh, yeah, social media is a good idea. I certainly highly recommend using social media. Yeah, meetups is probably pretty good for the United States I mean I used meetups originally when I was in New Zealand it just got a little bit harder over time because they changed their policy with in terms of cost and and how you pay uh, what's that um, Ogle Orc this channel gets the bar um, sets the bar high I love the material production value and the use of the starter set warm regards from Los Angeles USA Hey, thank you. Um, I will probably be using the starter set a lot more. You know, what I was so surprised, I did a, a live stream which I felt was a little bit um, hoary. And, and it's funny how people say that my production value is good because I feel like it isn't. Um, but that video on the Lost Mine of Fandelva, it's, it's gone up to being my most watched video currently. It's the one video that... Uh, people seem to watch the most it doesn't make the most money but it's the one that people sit at and they'll watch for a long time and I think that's because um, that Lost Mine of Fandelva and the, the Dungeons and Dragons starter box set is the best way to get started into the game if you've not played before it's really good if you're going to be the dungeon master and it's not a waste of time considering how cheap it is uh, to buy from Amazon or online or even the book depository uh, you can pick that up fairly cheap and it's still got a book in there that you can use as a player but I, it's still more of a useful to a dungeon master it's a really really nice package and yes I know it doesn't have miniatures and maps in it but uh, you know you can draw those sorts of things out and you pay for that you know if you want something that's got all that sort of stuff in it then the 
Pathfinder beginner's box does, but it's it's like three times as the cost. Um, in some cases, it'll be twice as expensive, but like three times the cost. It's a good product, but you do pay for what you're getting, and that's the thing to remember. Um, Death Junkie Gaming, well, finding people isn't my issue. It's just learning the game. I don't want to join people with zero idea of what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, all right. Look, I've done a whole bunch, like, what was it? Almost a week ago, I did a whole bunch of videos on how to play the wizard. And I did those live stream. Now, I know a lot of people um, don't agree with me going live stream with my videos, but I feel like that is a good way to ask questions, see how things are done. I pulled out miniatures, pulled out dice, um, demonstrated stuff. Uh, that's going to happen a lot more. And I'm not necessarily going to be doing all of my videos at exactly the same time. So that means you should be able to get access to learning how to play live stream. Um, and I can go over and answer questions. You can see how things are working. That is, that is my intention for um, 2018, is to make the channel far more accessible to people who want to learn to play the game. It's all very well, well watching my little short videos on different parts of the mechanical aspects of Dungeons and Dragons, but I know that uh, sometimes it's more useful if you guys can actually ask the question uh, right then and there. Okay, this is too much, so I'm going to just break that off. And yeah, once you've watched my videos, where's another good place to go? Um, I would say explaining Dungeons and Dragons 5e badly. I know that sounds like a bad name, <laughs> okay? But um, Andrew's channel is actually pretty good. It's very small. He hasn't done a lot of stuff recently. But his stuff is quite funny too, and he still does get the, the basic idea across. Um, uh, Don't Stop Thinking is probably, right now, as soon as he showed up, he, he's cornered the market in explaining how to play Dungeons & Dragons. The only thing I would say is he presents a lot of information very quickly, and if you can't get used to his accent, um, which can be... I mean, look, everybody's got an accent, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. And you know, I've got an accent, if you're American, you've got an accent, it's just a different type of accent, right? But um, he's got some pretty good videos as well. Um, who else does learning to play? Um, WAS20 has got a couple of videos, not a huge number, but probably his videos will pop up the most, a sample of how to play the game. Um, Dawnforge Cast does occasionally some rules based uh, videos. Mostly he does um, question and answer nowadays. I know I have noticed him doing some um, more detailed videos. His stuff is really high quality because he's got people who can, he can hire to get him to do that sort of stuff. So they're, they're, they're pretty good videos. Uh, and I plan to continue doing um, all of the classes. Um, I guess this week what I'm trying to focus on is the Dungeon Master because I spent like a week actually I spent I focused 10 days on just players and um, how to play the wizard and how to use them and although you haven't seen all those videos come up I did them live stream and they will eventually get posted so you'll be able to be able to watch those as well. Alright how are we doing? Getting there. Okay, so I'm going to start filling in the holes in the center while I've got plenty of putty. And that. I'll break that, pad that out, and then squeeze that, and then shove that in that little space there. There we go, that's going in. Squeeze it in, press it down. Try not to create air pockets when you're laying your putty over your tin foil. I've said it before, but it's it's still gonna be important because it creates a weak, a weak spot.
I'm sorry if you can't see what I'm doing, it's just I've got to get my finger in there to sort of um, blend it. I want to be able to blend it at least a little bit. So you can't tell that there's a great huge seam there. Okay. And... Doesn't have to look perfect. Remember, it's um, it's going to have paint over it, so you probably won't see a lot of things. You can you can paint over details. If you put enough paint on it, they won't see it. Okay, that's that little patch done, let's do another one. And let's press that in. I'm just trying to fill my the gaps on the inside right now. I missed it completely. All right. Oh, the whole thing's trying to lift off. <laughs> I might have to get my glue gun and um, and stick it down a bit. Yeah, see, it's it's coming away. All right, I'll do that later. Okay, well that's the inside mostly patted down, I've just got to blend it. And I think I'm going to have to use my tool because my finger is just not getting in there. I don't know if you can necessarily see everything that I'm doing. If you let me know in the chat if I need to turn uh, the work around so you can see better then, then I'll do that, it's not a problem. Man, warm. It is so hot. There you go. Good. It's coming along nicely. The great thing about this is because it's a, um, it's such a large creature, you don't have to worry about it being quite as um, precise. So you can have imperfections that will actually help convince people that it has not been manufactured and that you actually made it. <laughs> uh, okay, alright. Let's deal with the outside of it. There's still some sections that need putty over, so I'm going to build that up now. Oh man, it's so warm. 
All right, so I'm going to go with the sausage and then the flatten technique. I've done this before. That's just so I can deal with the, the outside layer going around the outside like so. And I'm going to um, press it in and attach it and then just leave it. And then I'm going to come back and tidy it up later. Does that make sense? So working quite quickly now because we've been at this for at least an hour and um, I would uh, I definitely need to go and do something else. So we're going to try to finish up this stage of the purple worm mouth fairly quickly like so and just attach and press. I'm still going to take and blend it in. I'm just attaching the putty quicker. Otherwise it's going to set on me. By the way, um, what uh, character class are you wanting to learn how to play? Because I, I did the wizard, I was tempted to do the fighter, but somebody had requested that I do the, the warlock next. I don't have any particular um, bent towards what I should do next, but you know, it's good to know what sort of um, classes people would prefer to see me cover first, because there's so many classes. I mean, um, if I do, if it takes me 10 videos to do everything, then uh, each class 10 videos, that's, I think it's like 8 classes, right? So that comes to a grand total of like 80 videos. That's a lot of videos. That's 80 days worth. Alright, so what have we got here? Um, Oggy Ogre, coming back after 30 years, now the, the kids want to play... Uh, first read through of the rules and the starter set read um, like an ancient long forgotten text. Yeah, it did a little bit. Uh, then uh, then you found my channel. Oh, cool. You know, I think um, getting your kids involved in Dungeons and Dragons is a really way, good way of connecting with them. You know, they love to play games as it is in fantasy. And can you imagine how much... Uh, extra time they will spend away from the computer and the Xbox if you can get them to the table with a few miniatures or without miniatures and just using their imagination and rolling some dice um, so yeah I think it's a, a great thing uh, to get the kids involved in so it's awesome if I can help make that happen um, helping you out yep cool Okay, so for those of you who haven't figured it out, who might have shown up, we're just making the mouth of a purple worm and then we're going to give it teeth. Probably not in this video because there won't be time uh, and the putty needs to sort of set a bit. And I also need to finish up fairly shortly. But we will be coming back to this. It takes about couple of hours usually for this stuff to harden and then after that uh, you're looking at uh, about a day to go completely s solid and hard um, so that it's you can attach more onto it and um, this putty you can attach putty onto it once it's dry if you're worried about it the millie putt's pretty good at, good about that um, that's why I like using it and it's cheaper than green stuff which is why I also use it And layer there. Now, if you're worried about the tin foil showing, and I haven't covered over the tin foil on the outside edge, it doesn't matter because I I can I can glue uh, bits of rock or stones on the outside to make it look like it's busting through. Um, those are all options, depending on how much work you want to put into it, really. There we 
we go. Squeeze that down. Remember, I am going to go back over and smooth that it's all over. I can't just leave it like it is, otherwise it'll look a little bit patchy. Covered almost all of the tin foil, which is good. And flatten it back out again. Squish it into place. Squish, 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 squish. And then last little bit over here. So that is about a third of a packet of uh, Millie Putt that I've used so far. And I paid about $8.50 in New Zealand for this stuff. All right. So now I'm going to go through and just blend in the surface and then I'll go back over with my finger to tidy it up. Okay, so I'm just using my tool. And just join it. Press my finger in there a little bit. tool marks out with your finger piece of cake nothing to it Cool, it's working out well. It's gonna work out just fine. Sorry if I'm getting it kind of quiet. It's um, I'm just trying to work as fast as I possibly can and get this all blended in. Like so. Tool and finger. Tool and finger. Works a charm. So, you, you guys that have been here for the whole time, this is super simple. Anybody could pull this off. And then all we're going to be doing is attaching some teeth to it, which will be some toothpicks, these things, into the mouth to create uh, the, 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 the maw. Super easy, 
people went. Now, as I said, you wouldn't really have your purple worm protruding out of the ground anyway. It's just going to come up, take its victim, pull it back down, burrow under the ground. Okay, let's just pat that down as well. There we go. Oh. If it's a bit thin in some locations, you don't need to worry about that either because you can just add putty later and uh, clean that up and it will stick and you won't even notice that you attached it. Honestly, you will not know. Uh, rule of fantasy, dirty one. How's it going? Miniatures are quite difficult to collect when you're when you're cheap but does anyone know any good sites that sell miniatures or minis um, I used to I used to say that uh, going to the the miniature market was a good idea but truthfully I don't feel like there's anywhere nowadays that has cheap miniatures if you're if you're fine to, to pick up stuff that isn't official Dungeons and Dragons miniatures or and, and repurpose something else you're you're probably gonna have a better time of it um, I find uh, if you want official Dungeons and Dragons matches then go with something like the Dungeons and Dragons board games because there's like 40 42 miniatures in each box just have a look at the one the problem is the price has gone up I did a bunch of videos on the topic and so did uh, Blanco a little bit uh, and unfortunately the traffic to those particular board games has increased and so the prices have gone up as well because the sellers have realized what's going on um, it's still the best way to get official Dungeons and Dragons miniatures and pay very little uh, I know people rave about the uh, Reaper Bones miniatures but Reaper Bones miniatures are still about two and a half to three dollars for the cheapest miniature uh, if you're getting a set it's a bit different but if you're just buying a single miniature from them, which is often the, going to be the case, you know, when you're, you don't necessarily want um, whole big sets. So you're not actually, and they're not painted. Um, they, you, you, some, some assembly is required in some cases. You still have to paint them. That's unpainted. Whereas if you get the, the board games, the miniatures from there, they're going to be a lot, uh, a lot cheaper. Um, I know people prefer the Reaper bones uh, miniatures because they feel like the details are better but you know if you're dealing with cost and you really want cheap that's the best way otherwise if you're alright with going with something that is not a Dungeons and Dragons official miniature um, I've got a video on how to make your own tokens like flat tokens out of Magic the Gathering cards or other things I think we made um, uh, some tokens out of just bits of cardboard uh, from an image that we'd found uh, and I think that was the back of something I can't remember what it was it might have been the back of the miniature box but you could do that with anything uh, you can make your own pawns like stand up cardboard pawns I've got a video that shows you how to do that as well in fact I might have more than one I can't remember how many I've done but uh, I should do another one at some point so there's another way of doing it otherwise if you've got like a two dollar shop or a Chinese Emporium or an importer that imports some um, uh, cheap stuff from China often they'll have little to plastic toys that you could use for your miniatures uh, I find that dinosaurs are quite a common thing it seems to be universal that they always pump out those so you can grab uh, toy dinosaurs uh, very easily and they can fill the role of a big dragon or um, a big monster of whatever type you want so yeah really easy way to do it getting them um, and you'll be surprised the sorts of things you can get in those um, import stores if you've got them in your country because uh, they they sell all sorts of things they're really cool okay 
Right, well I feel like this is probably where I need to stop for this stage of it. The plan, when I come back and this is all dry, is I'm going to take these and I'm going to cut them off. So I'm going to cut one off right now so you can kind of have a, a quick peek as to what is likely to happen. Decide on roughly how big you want your tooth. And we are going to feed these little these things into just press it in there for now. I'm going to feed them into here. Now, my suggestion to you is so that you can get the miniature in, is have the teeth pointing up more rather than um, inward, so that you can um, and we can glue these on with a hot glue gun if you prefer, just around the outside, or you can use the the milli putt and, and embed them into the putty. Um, you could literally do that right now. Actually, I wonder if I can get away with doing that. I might just, let's see if I just cut a few off and just jam them in. We'll see how we go. Yeah, they're, they're not really wanting to do that very, yeah, that's not going to be the most efficient way. Would have liked it if I could. I'm going to have to use um, putty and build it up around there, or I'm just going to go with the quick and fast glue gun, run a bead and and, and plonk them in. Don't worry about that little bit, that'll all get filled in anyway. You can fill that in with glue or something else, putty. Alright, cool. Alright, so yeah, I'm just going to get this out of the way and I'll do my little final sign out. For those of you who've been watching, hey, thank you. And um, Rule of Fantasy 31, you are welcome. I'm glad I could help. And uh, yeah, let me know how it goes. Go and check out Blanco, the YouTube channel Blanco, because he does a lot of videos on miniatures. So you're, you're probably going to learn quite a lot from him at, with regard to where you can go to get cheap stuff. He is in the States. Um, well, that's my understanding. He is in the States. So a lot of his information will be based on retailers that are in his country rather than in your country. I don't know where you are. Now, if you found this video helpful, then please share and like the video. Share the video with somebody else if they like making monsters, because I do videos on making monsters, as it happens. Although this one isn't finished yet, and we, we will finish it later on. If you're not subscribed to the channel, then press that subscribe button so that you can come back and watch more videos. I do videos pretty much every single day, so you don't necessarily have to worry about clicking the bell button underneath the video. But if you do click the bell button under the video, you'll get occasional notifications that will let you know when I put a video up. If you have any questions, um, by all means, last chance while we've got the live stream going to ask me a question. Otherwise, after the live stream, just put a question or a comment uh, down below in the comment section. That's what it's for. If you've made a purple worm before, let me know how it went. Um, if you've got any advice, because we're not finished yet, this is just going to have to be part one of dealing with the purple worm mouth. It, it doesn't look like a lot of work, but it's actually taken quite a lot of time and effort to get this far. We're almost running into two hours on this video, it's a long time. Uh, if you want to really support my channel, then watching more of my videos is really, really good. I find that helpful. I get a little bit of ad revenue from YouTube or AdSense. Uh, if you buy stuff online though, in the description there's usually an affiliate link to Amazon or some other place where you can buy stuff online. You don't have to necessarily click on that link and buy that item. You can click on the link and go and buy something else as long as you go through my link. I get a small commission, you pay the same price and uh, yeah, that, that actually gets me more uh, revenue compared to doing something like Patreon or um, ad revenue on the channel, which is, you know, how a lot of people tend to make their um, their money. And this pays for equipment, materials, and just sometimes my time. Sometimes if I'm doing this, it's just my time. But often I'm using a lot of the money right now just for covering the cost of materials. And equipment, it's allowed me to buy a webcam, the microphone, uh, the new, all of the tools that you see before me, I've all, that's all been done through people supporting me, through um, watching my videos, the ad revenue that I get and from the Amazon um, purchases that people made uh, through my affiliate link. And we are going to just um, grab my little dice, it's around here somewhere, and sign out and say my usual thing. Have a great day. Go and have some food, have a drink, go to sleep if you're up really late.
go and do something else and uh, go and watch another video go and watch somebody else's video till next time keep rolling those 20s all right yeah plus you got to deal with the shipping it's um it's still not the cheapest way to deal with things unfortunately there really isn't a, the cheap option nowadays